Mike Coe here. Uh, today is a video that I've been meaning to make for a really long time and for whatever reason I haven't been able to do it but today's the day. I'm going to show you guys how to do custom exhibit stickers uh, the right way in Adobe Acrobat. To do this you're going to need an Acrobat uh, DC, uh, which is like their cloud uh, subscription service, um, or if you have Acrobat Standard or Acrobat Pro, an older version, those will work too. Um, but you, can't, you won't be able to do it with just the free version. Uh, unfortunately, this functionality isn't there. And so, in addition to the special version of Acrobat that you're going to need, the other thing that you're going to need, I'm going to provide for you. It's going to be a special PDF. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description uh, for the PDF that will have. Uh, three kinds of stickers in there for you. Uh, it'll have a plaintiff sticker, a defendant sticker, and just a, a generic exhibit sticker, depending on, on what you need. So uh, let's head over to the laptop so you can kind of see uh, what we're doing. So the first thing that you need to do is to download this file. I've put it uh, on my desktop. It's kind of a gibberish name. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, and you have to save it in a special location because the way that Acrobat works, it, uh, to to create the stamps, it looks for a very specific location on your computer to pull kind of like the template for, the, for these stamps from. And so uh, I'll also put in the description like the full like path file name for it, but I'll show you how to get there too because it can be a little bit difficult. So I'll start in the C drive. You'll go to your C drive. Let me maximize this so you can see. It's in the C drive and you're going to go to users, go to your users. And then the next folder that you need is a folder called app data. But as you can see here, so there really isn't a folder called app data. It's a hidden folder, so you might have to type it in. So then I'll come up here, and now you could type information in, just kind of like a, a web address. And I'll write uh, app data. From there, go to roaming, Adobe, Acrobat, and then DC is the version. I have a couple of other versions of Acrobat on this computer too, but we'll go to DC is the version we're looking for. And then the folder we're looking for is stamps. This stamps folder is currently empty because I because I made it empty uh, to kind of clear out uh, what's in there for the example. So if I opened up Acrobat, for example, let's open up Adobe Acrobat. I made a folder full of exhibits just to kind of play around with. Uh, let's open up this one. All right. So we've got this here. Uh, it's a just a, a random PDF form. If I go to my stamps, which is going to be in the Tools ribbon, if you're using the Creative Cloud or the DC version, and go to Stamps. If I go to my stamps, dynamic stamps is where they're ultimately going to be. Now, a dynamic stamp is something that uh, it can kind of pull information and create it for you. So, like the examples that are already in Acrobat are like when it was reviewed. So, like these are like if a document was revised, reviewed, received, or approved, or whatever, if it's confidential, um, it'll auto generate like a date and time. What I want to generate is an exhibit name, right? And so the sticker that I want to to, to show was uh, I, ideally it'll say plaintiff's exhibit or defendant's exhibit and it'll auto generate whether it's exhibit one or 1000 or, or whatever the number is. I don't have any of them in there yet because my stamps, my custom stamps area is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that file that was on my desktop. Let's find it. And I'm just going to drag and drop this in there. Now you might already have a file that's in there and it's going to have a similar kind of gibberish name. You can just re either delete that file or rename it to you know add dash old to the end, just so that way in case something gets messed up, you still have that original one. And even if you wipe it out, it, it'll be it'll be fine. So now what I've done is I've dropped that file, that PDF file, the one that you'll have to go to Dropbox uh, in the link in the description to download, and put that into uh, this stamps folder. Now I can reopen Adobe Acrobat. Let's open up another PDF. Let's do this one. Uh, yeah, we'll open up this one real quick. And now if I look at it, look, this is just a form, some sort of tax form that's fillable. Let's say this has to be uh, marked as an exhibit. I can go to my tools. Let's maximize this. Go to my tools and then my stamps. Now I have my stamps toolbar out here, and I can in dynamic. I now have three new examples of stamps. So this is what you want. So if this is a plaintiff's exhibit, 
or defendant's exhibit or just a regular exhibit and you don't want to mark it specific to a party, um, this is uh, what you would pick. So let's say that this is a plaintiff's exhibit. Right now, I have this kind of, it's somewhat transparent and I could scroll down to wherever I want to put it and let's go to the bottom of this page and stamp it, right? And so let's take a look at it in full screen. So there's the stamp. The nice thing about this is now I can, I, I, even though I have the stamp and the text that's in here, auto-generated from the file name. And we'll talk about that more in a second. But once I have a stamp, I can delete it by selecting it and hit delete. I can also move it to another location. So let's say I have a, a PDF where there's important information in the lower right hand side. Let's see if I can find a document that has that kind of quality to it. All right, so let's say I have uh, a PDF here, and let's say this was marked as an exhibit. Let's look at it in full view. If I were to dynamic stamp it here in like the normal spot, it might cover some useful information. So what's nice about being able to move them is I can move them up here or in a place that's not covering everything. And what it has done, it has auto-populated and fit as much of the regular file name in there as I could. But let's not do that. Let's, so that way we have uh, more of a final product ready for us. Let's treat this like these are all of our exhibits and the, the assignment that we've been given is to stamp all these exhibits with their trial exhibit numbers. Now when you do that, first thing you'll, you'll do is you'll probably collect all your PDFs into one central folder. Uh, and let's say that this is it right now. There's only about 10 exhibits or PDFs in here for now. Um, but this is enough to give you an example of kind of what we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these files. So let's say that these are plaintiff's exhibits. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these. Uh, and hopefully, and ideally you're doing this with copies, not your digital originals. I'm going to name this PTX001. Number lock on here, 001. And that'll be my first PDF. For the next one, PTX002, and so on. What I would probably do if this were a real uh, trial and real exhibits that I was working with, I would probably uh, use a batch renamer to rename these for me, which that will probably be the next video that we make is how to, use, to do that. But for now, I'm just going to kind of brute force it since there's only about 10 of them. All right. Eight, and then... PTX09. All right, so now I have my files named according to their exhibit number, which is a good practice to have, especially if you're going to be exchanging electronically your exhibits anyway. So now what I can do is I can, what I would do when I have, because we get asked to do this relatively frequently, is I'll open up all of the exhibits just so I can get through them relatively quickly. And I'll look at, for example, PTX001 look at a view where I could see the entire um, page all at once. There's a photo of uh, our office building here. And I'll go to the comment section, comment tools, and hit the stamp. And I'll pick a dynamic stamp for a plaintiff's exhibit. And it has already auto-populated the PTX001 for me. So how, how does this work, right? So these dynamic stamps, like I said before, the dynamic stamp pulls information about the file to create whatever stamp you're putting on in here. The way that I've created these stamps is that the yellow ones have plaintiff's trial exhibit on there, the blue ones have defendant's trial exhibit on there, and so on. And the section on the bottom, there's a little snippet of code. The, the script takes off the .pdf at the end and then puts that as whatever exhibit number it is. So I don't have to type anything in, I don't have to worry about creating a stamp and then adding a text box on top of that. That's problematic, it's hard to do. Um, all I have to do is open it, hit the stamp, and then close it, and it'll ask me if I wanna save, and I'll hit yes. Right, so now I've got this other exhibit, it's PTX003. I'm gonna grab my comment tool, go to dynamic, and hit that, PTX003. If I put it down here, it might cover something that's important, so I'll put it right there in a blank spot. Right, again, important to be able to individually place each stamp. Once you get into a rhythm, you should be able to move through it relatively quickly. Uh, one of the other things that I frequently do is I take this tool and I add it 
can add it right to the top so that way it's just always in there and I just drag and drop to get it on there All right. All right. so that's there and I'll go to the next one and I got my stamp already so I don't have to worry about opening that toolbar All right this one's a little tight but fits it's a, that's a very quick way of looking at how you can have custom dynamic stamps uh, for your exhibits in Adobe Acrobat. Uh, hit the subscribe button. A lot more videos are coming your way that are going to talk about how you can set up uh, your laptops, your iPads, and get just generally getting ready for trial uh, with technology.